Welcome back. You're watching our continuing coverage here from Davos 2023. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me now is the CEO of the Niti Aayog, Mr. Paramayar. Mr. Aayog, thanks so much for joining us and welcome to Davos. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you know, let me start by asking you about uh, the conversations that you intend having both with policymakers from around the globe as well as business leaders. Uh, it's been a year of resilience for India. There's a lot of expectation around whether we can build on this. Uh, you know, uh, who are you going to be meeting here in Davos and what's the story going to be? Well, there are a number of uh, business leaders we're going to meet. We're also going to meet with uh, multinational bank leaders. And, you know, we've got a big Indian delegation here. There are four ministers uh, who are going to be here. And, of course, the backbone is our business executives, our business leaders, captains of industry. So we're looking really, uh, you know, to continue, uh, particularly during the G20 presidency as well. And uh, it's all about how India continues to be the one bright spot in the sort of in the global economy uh, with the headwinds. And I think that uh, it's partly to sort of engage with uh, international business and, you know, continue to uh, make the point that India is an attractive destination for business. So, you know, India is open. India is open. That's going to be the message that, uh, that you want foreign investors to take away from this. But speaking specifically about uh, areas of opportunity that you want more FDI to come into and, uh, uh, you know, opportunities that you want to leverage on. There's been a plethora of PLI schemes that the government has announced already, 13 uh, plus. Uh, the Niti Aayog, of course, has been at the forefront of working with the government on putting these PLI schemes together, specifically on manufacturing. The expectation now is that this could be the opportunity to seize on the potential, especially as global supply chains uh, uh, look at moving out of China or China plus one. On that front specifically, uh, you know, is, is there a, a message that you're sending out that the government intends to send out here? I think there's a clear message there. And, you know, if we're talking of PLI, it's the whole PLI ecosystem, not the PLI itself. If you look at all the structural reforms that have taken place over the last six or seven years, all the way from the insolvency and banking code, the, uh, the goods and services tax, you look at uh, the PLI itself, and if you look at asset monetization pipeline, the national infrastructure uh, pipeline. So I think it's, it all sends out a message. But coming back, and they all are sort of part of this ecosystem, but if you look at the PLI itself, you know, it's about strategic sectors. It's about it's about manufacturing. It's about obviously leading to exports, bringing in global players, and you know, and really putting manufacturing in very specific areas on the map. So we would like global investors to come in. Uh, you know, the system is ready there. We have got the we have got the skills. We have got the market, and it's a great opportunity for us to establish ourselves as Global Value Chains Inc. Mm -hmm. You know, on this aspiration of uh, positioning ourselves as the Global Value Chains Inc., to quote you specifically, uh, is there also a growing consideration that uh, perhaps to benefit of this opportunity uh, that, that the sort of uh, uh, move out of China opens up, uh, is perhaps a recalibration of our position on allowing joint ventures that also have Chinese investments? Do you believe that that could be up for consideration? Look, I think, you know, that's something which the government will have to decide. But uh, the fact is that we're open for business. You know, with, given the fact that uh, we have maintained a growth of 6.8 uh, to 7 percent, the last quarter they're predicting 7 percent. So jobs have increased. So I think in the face of all these global headwinds, you know, recently the Prime Minister had an interaction with economists in the Niti Aayog mm -hmm. just a couple of mm -hmm. days ago. And I think there was acknowledgement all around, uh, obviously, that, you know, India has somehow managed to remain resilient. And I think uh, we are very optimistic about growth. If you look at exports as well, you know, despite uh, you know the import bill going up, you know, partly due to the import, the oil bill as well. But I think that you know we are very ambitious, and I think the commerce minister is talking about a two trillion export target mm. by 2030. So I think things are in place. The PLI is a huge trigger to bring in world-class manufacturing, uh, value added, and you know, and make at home and also export. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Some of the other measures that the government is likely to take, especially when we talk about the ease of living, and here in Davos, of course, the cost of living uh, is one of the big global risks, and of course, we've had to deal with that back home as well. Uh, on that front, from a social security perspective, from a social net perspective, we've just seen some changes being done as far as the food program is concerned, for instance. What more do you believe uh, is the need of the hour as of today on that front? 
Exactly. Now, I think the food security, uh, you know, program which we put in place, particularly during COVID, that made a huge difference. At one point, you know, there was more than a crore hot meals being served during that program. I think we've got a very strong social security net in India. And that's actually encouraged people, you know, to go out and spend and consume, unlike other countries where they don't have such a strong social security net, so they're saving much more. Whereas here, consumption is increasing. But on the social uh, uh, security aspect, in addition to, you know, the food part, you know, now the, the, we've got the National Food Security Act, which is increasing the number of food grains people are eligible for. I think going forward, that's one part which will always be important because we need growth with inclusion. But if you look at the number of social programs which the country has run over the last eight years, you know, whether it's, um, whether it's toilets for women, whether it's housing, if, if, you know, whether it's roads, I think whether it's bank accounts, Jandhan, 40 million bank accounts. So I think what is really important here is that this program of uh, basic services at scale, that's something which in the first six, seven years of this government, you know, they've, whether it's rural or urban, there's a sense of security that no one is left behind. And I think building on that, you know, together with growth, uh, growth with inclusions is something which the Prime Minister is talking about. And in the end, the plan is in 25 years to become a developed country in 2047. So I think the building blocks have been set in place. And now it's a matter of getting down to further implementation and getting the states on board. That's a very important agenda, particularly for NITI. Uh, you know, an instrument for enhancing government effectiveness, government of India and the states. So every state has got a critical role to play in that $5 trillion or $10 trillion target. And I think building the capacity and working together with states is going to be very, very important to get them all on the same sort of national page. Uh, and that's a very important point that you made, uh, you know, in this uh, collaborative federalism uh, that we want to move forward with. What will be the imperatives? What are the priorities, for instance, the NITI is hoping to work on to ensure that this is much more effective? Sure. You know, if, if the Prime Minister's speech, 15th August this, in 2022, he made a very important point. He said, India grows when the states grow and in the spirit of uh, competitive, collaborative federalism. So that's a very, very important mandate for NITI. And so we have started something called the State Support Mission, where we work with all states and we work with them to help them develop their own GDP target, an inclusive GDP target. What's the roadmap for that? And what's that institution which will drive that in the state? So we've already had four or five states which have created their own state niti. Mm. UP has done it, Karnataka has done it, Assam has done it, Maharashtra has done it. So we're working with them, but then we need to build the capacity, help them to build the capacity of that institution to have the right skills, uh, which again comes back to Skill India, and how do you develop the skills and how do you share that knowledge across states? That's really important because you don't need to reinvent the wheel and every state will have its own strategy. In fact, every district, the Prime Minister is talking about one district, yeah. one product. So every district will have its own unique development trajectory. Every state will have its own unit. So we are working with states and we're helping them to help the districts as well. You know, that is internal collaboration. But let's talk about external collaboration because that really is the theme here at the World Economic Forum of, sure. uh, of nurturing global collaboration yeah. in a fragmented world. And the role that India is going to play and will have to play, especially in the context of the G20 as well, to get different sides and different voices uh, to move forward in a unified fashion. How do you see that playing itself out? I think, you know, the Prime Minister's global standing is making a huge difference. You know, uh, you know in, whether it's Ukraine or whether it's the whole geopolitical situation, I think that personal standing makes a huge difference. He has the ability to influence uh, and convene. So that itself is making a difference. But India's role is being in increasingly recognized globally. And, you know, whether it's in partnership with the West. And, you know, our, we play a role of, it's a situational thing. The Prime Minister comes in, you know, whether it's the Ukraine, this is not a time, uh, you know, for war. So I think that he carries a lot of weight globally. But in the G20 presidency, there are four or five very important themes which India will sort of try to stress. The first is obviously climate, climate, environment and life lifestyle for the environment, something the Pro Prime Minister announced at COP26 in yeah. Glasgow. How can sustainable lifestyles actually help to improve climate? And then, of course, we have got uh, the energy transition, going to be critical. And, of course, climate financing is going to be on the table.
particularly from the developed countries, what are they putting on the table after all the commitments made in Paris? And then we have got women-led development, uh, the whole reform of the multinational institutions, accelerating the SDGs, and critically, digital economy and data for development. I mean, India's digital story is phenomenal. Uh, as you know, 40% UPI, almost 5,000 crores transactions last year. Yeah. So the whole digital story, India stack, this is something where India can help the world. You know, I was looking at some numbers recently. There are apparently 4 billion people in the world without any digital identity. There are 2 billion people without bank accounts. And, uh, you know, 130 countries don't do digital transactions. So there are huge lessons of India for the world, whether it's SDG progress or whether it's digital story to the world. So India can play a major role in convening, but also in helping other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think the digital story is, is well articulated, well documented as well, and that is going to certainly be something that I would imagine that India showcases. But, you know, you talked about uh, the life mission as well, and that's what I want to focus a little bit more on. What are the next steps that you see, the tangible next steps uh, that we can expect as far as the execution roadmap is concerned? Sure. So, you know, when the Prime Minister and the Secretary General of the UN they jointly launched this life globally on 20th of October in Kevadia in, in, in India. The Secretary General was visiting India then. This is a very major, it's the other side of the climate debate if you want to think of it like that. On the one side you've got the science, the policy and the NDCs. And here you've got a bottom-up approach. Well, how can people contribute to climate? I mean there's evidence from the UN, from UNEP that people's actions can actually reduce emissions by almost 20 percent. So they can make a big difference. For the Prime Minister who's leading this as a global movement, it's about how individuals and communities can contribute to the climate and environment. And there are three aspects to it. One is if you nudge people into uh, adopting climate-friendly behavior, whether it's water conservation or, you know, you are riding bicycles instead of, you know, using big SUVs, simple things like that, using cloth instead of plastic. Uh, the Prime Minister's focus on simple actions, sort of walking the talk. That can nudge demand. So industry in turn and corporates can respond to that. If people demand climate-friendly products, they will have to respond. So then the supply comes in. And finally, the policy angle. So there are three aspects to it which are being rolled out. Individually, India, our traditions, our culture has always been climate-friendly. So that is going on and that's being rolled out. But globally as well, if you remember, there were 10 heads of state who in endorsed the Prime Minister's life movement at Kevedia. So now life is being rolled out globally as well. And June 5th, World Environment Day, we plan to have a large international conference where action research will be rewarded. Okay, well, uh, we look forward to seeing more uh, play out on the 5th of June. But as far as NITI itself is concerned, uh, there seems to be a little bit of a change as far as priorities are concerned. Less industry focused and more sort of social sector focused. That's the impression. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But uh, is that true? Is that accurate? Actually, not at all. So we continue with all our cutting edge work because first and foremost, we are a national think tank. Innovation, disruption, whether it's on electric mobility or energy or the PLI scheme or asset monetization, which we're trying to take this, that focus continues. Is there disappointment on the asset monetization front? Well, last year, you know, against a target of uh, 80,000, we did 90,000 crores. And this year it's moving along. You know, uh, the finance minister has taken a couple of meetings. And, it, it, you know, we're hoping to have a, a sort of more progress as the year rolls out. So, so that focus on disruption, innovation, technology, digital, everything which Niti has always done, that continues. But there's also a, a, a focus on the states. I think that's quite important. Not so much social. Social, of course, is important, but there's agriculture, health, education. We've got Vinod Paul with us who has been leading, you know, the whole COVID yeah. campaign as well. But I think the whole idea is to take some of the asset monetization and move it down to the states as well because, you know, they need to raise resources. The whole focus on public-private partnerships is very much there. We have a very strong team in Niti, so nothing has changed. Okay. Uh, you know, you talked about... Uh PLI, you also talked about uh, electric mobility, and I know that that is something that the NITI has been championing uh, for, for the last uh, several years now. We're almost at 2024, which is when the sun sets on the current FAME policy. Uh, do you believe that there is need for FAME to continue in its current avatar or perhaps in a different version? 
uh, or do you believe that it's time to uh, to do away with subsidies? Well, there's a lot of uh, demand coming from the industry. Again, this is something which we need to work out with the Department of Heavy Industries and, of course, the Finance Ministry. So that, that discussion will go on and we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Everyone sending in their budget wish list, and I'm sure I'm sure Neeti's put together one and then sent it in as well. What would you like to see? Look, I, you know, many things obviously. Continued push on the agricultural front, you know, the PLI is obviously continuing. You know, I, I'm sure there'll be a focus on growth. Uh, again, fiscal consolidation. I think that's quite important. You know, keeping the the budget deficit. You know, trying to bring it down to that level, and obviously jobs are very very important. So MSME is needless to say. Uh, all these were also discussed at the Chief Secretary's conference in some detail, where the overarching theme was Vixet Bharat reaching the last mile. So growth with inclusion. And uh, let's see what happens in the budget. What was the feedback from the economists when they met the Prime Minister? It was very positive. Uh, you know, it was a very, very frank discussion. Uh, it went on for uh, about 90 minutes. They also, and you know, the Prime Minister summed it up brilliantly. You know, you had a lot of divergent views. But his ability to... Divergence over what? <laughs> uh, not divergent. I mean, they went all the way from, you know, how do you deal with uh, other countries, all the way to uh, the goods and services uh, tax, you know, reforms in general, jobs, uh, Mandrega. There were a lot of discussion. But the ability of the Prime Minister to pull it all together and summarize it in a few succinct sort of, you know, uh, sentences, that was amazing. Paramayar, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here in Davos uh, uh, and taking us through the conversations that the uh, Indian government intends to have here, uh, as well as the focus areas and priorities. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much Thank for you your much time. Pleasure well, to be here. Uh, well, I, I have to say that that quote of yours, of India's aspiration being the global value chain, Inc., <laughs> is certainly going to be something that we are going to be using. But thanks very much for joining us. We are going to take a break here and return with our live coverage from Davos 2023. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute. Grace Moore.